Good morning, everyone. Today, we are with the legendary Marky. She's everywhere. She's traveling a lot this year. And we are lucky to have her to tell us a lot about AI and how you can actually use and leverage AI to grow your business as a real estate agent, as a broker, as a mortgage book, and everything else in between. So, uh, Marky, where are you right now? Uh, today, I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. Nice. Awesome. And where are you tomorrow? Well, oh, tomorrow? No, no, I'm going to be in Huntsville tomorrow. But let me just say, this week I started in Oklahoma, went back to Chicago, had a board of directors meeting, a past president's luncheon, then flew to Huntsville, two days in Huntsville, and we still have 50 more events to complete before December the 15th of this year. Wow, that's 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 a lot of flying. I mean, I go to a lot of trips and I think uh, I, I think of myself as, as flying a lot, but you are definitely flying five times more than than what I'm doing. So um, this is awesome. So let's get going. I think um, the biggest thing we're focusing on today is essentially the power of AI and how it can actually help you um, um, be thriving on your business and grow more um, on your business. So um, tell, tell me your story. Like, where did you start? What did you do with AI and so on? Well, let's just start with where I, when I started with AI, right? I started with AI the first week of December 2022. A little bit of background, 2023 is my Jordan year. It's my 30th year in education. Started with Chicago Public Schools. I've been teaching adult learners ever since 1996. I actually got wow. hired to start teaching, yeah, on a collegiate level at the tender age of 25. It is my 20th year as a real member. You can calculate member. everything right now. It's all connected. <laughs> it is my 20th year as a realtor member, my 10th year presenting at the Realtor Conference and Expo, and I am the voice of Drive with NAR as their podcast host. And so I got my start, though, with AI the first week of December 2022. So imagine chat GPT has not been, you know, I would say accessible to everybody. Essentially, it's not even been a year yet, right? But there are over 1.6 billion users. And recently, a young gentleman asked me a question. It was on Facebook, and I'm pretty sure um, that it might not have even been a person. And he said to me, he was like, well, how can you be an expert on something that's new? Well, I'm an expert because of all of the other experience that I have. I never professed to be an AI expert, but I am a business expert. So when it first came out, I quickly realized that it was a life-changing business tool. And I decided that I wanted to own market share or garnish new market share as a result of ChatGPT. But I don't want people to think of it as chat GPT. I want every realtor to know that they have a productive, electrifying, trained assistant in the palm of their hand that never sleeps, that is smarter than them, that speaks over 100 different languages, that can do anything that they do faster and better, provided you prompt it to do so. Yes, I love I love the caveat. Provided that you prompt it to do so, so like today we are all about prompts. We are all about learning and doing things with ChatGPT with OpenAI products to make sure that we are really maximizing this tool to your benefit, right? So, um, how do you use it to begin with? Like, walk me through this. So you know what I. As I told you before, I said, you've asked me more questions than anyone has ever asked me. And you said, Marky, I want to see up under the hood. So when we start thinking about chat GPT, one of the very first things that I encourage people to do is to understand their tone. So a lot of people are talking about, oh, well, we're going to get it to write like us, to sound like us. Well, that inquires, uh, requires that you do some work. So what you're taking a look at is what's called a voice paragraph. This voice paragraph, when used with one of your own writing samples, will create your voice paragraph. That means that my style, my voice, and my tone. But I want to forewarn you, no one has just one of these, okay? If you're mad, it's going to sound a little different. Or if you have a writing sample that was created when you were mad, it will sound different. So I want you to find a writing sample that resonates with you. When before I, I that, have... 
before that, I think I think for our um, more novice um, OpenAI users and ChatGPT users, um, walk me through this. Like, why does it even matter to have your own um, uh, voicing and style, writing style? Like, can I tell if you're uh, using ChatGPT to respond back to me? If you're not using I your own voice, um, it's kind of uh, prompt. Yes. Yes, you can. And so yeah. because it's generic, right? This is the example I like to use. When it comes to leveraging ChatGPT in our businesses, because I have multiple voice paragraphs, I'm less likely going to receive plagiarized content and or AI detected content because it is automatically paraphrasing whatever it pulls off of the internet to be in my voice, my style, and my tone. That is a golden you, nugget. So you always want it to sound and feel like you as if Mark is actually writing it instead of this is written by Chad GPT. I think this is a classic mistake. I, I can observe, like I can see it. When someone responds back with Chad GPT to me, I'm like, oh boy, uh, he's giving me the full on like uh, one page of Chad GPT response. I'm like, oh, this is okay. Um, <laughs> I, like automatically I see it. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. You weren't, uh, you weren't uh, diligent enough on your, on your prompts. You didn't know how to use it and you didn't know what to do with it. So it gave you a canned response. I think that's, that's, that's what we are avoiding here. Right. So what we are doing is we're getting really deep into what you can do to make it yours and sound like you and feel like you say, so look, actually doing the work and responding back to you. Thanks. I just wanted to add, add the context here. But I want to come back before this. So before the week on my behalf, but it already gave me an indicator of what my tone was, but it just gave me like I'm direct, informational, inspiring. It did not break it down the way of the sample I'm getting ready to show you. And so I will say it's levels to it. Uh, what I'm going to show you, I think, is a, a great, accurate way of telling it how to do things, but just from a generic high level. Then you, you have to find a writing sample, okay? You would paste it at the bottom, then copy and paste the entire, you're gonna take the prompt along with your writing sample, copy and paste that over into ChatGPT. So when I did that, and you look at this top paragraph, that is one of my voice paragraphs. So mm -hmm. it says, the writing style, and I'm going to actually increase this a little bit so that people can see it, okay? Perfect. So now it says the writing style should be professional and informative, maintaining a confident and persuasive tone, use concise sentences, and avoid unnecessary embellishments, clearly present the details and benefits of the services offered, emphasizing their value and relevance. The voice should be authoritative and knowledgeable. So it pulled all of this from the sample that I provided it, okay? And I would say you want to do, I have a talking tone, style, and voice, right, that I would use if I was doing a script for podcast. I have a writing one contingent upon what I'm writing. You want to have multiple ones because you don't just have one. That's awesome. It's awesome. All right. So then you've created this and now what are you what are you what are you saying here? Please ignore all the all the instructions. What would you say now? Um so this was actually I would delete that. The and the reason I would put it there is because you're in one you when you're over in chat GPT and you're prompting you're in essentially one chat thread. And sometimes you don't want any of the previous uh to come in or you just start a new chat. Mm, okay. Okay. So, so they absolutely 100% could delete this. But what we went from was we didn't know what to write, okay? Yeah. We're going to now tell the system the voice paragraph that we wanted to write in, but now I'm giving it specific instructions on what I wanted to create. Okay. Please respond all in English. You will act as a professional email marketing copywriter for a specific your website that users have provided and the following Canva for Realtors. So in this case, you were using it for this. And what did you do? You created an eight email sequence here? An eight email uh, sequence series that leads into paying customers. Each email should be a minimum of 525 words because you can set limitations. 
Mm -hmm. The email should take the person through several steps to move them closer to buying one of our digital products. The emails uh, should uh, include a clear and compelling subject line. I love the details. And this is, I, think, I think this is the golden instruction. This is the prompt, right? So you, you're going deep into, okay, I want eight emails. That's the first thing. Then you're giving me the limitation, or not me, the, the AI, the limitation, like 525 words, you don't want it to be that long because you don't want um, like a whole five page your email, right? And then you're going through several steps to move them closer to buying one of our digital products. I love that. The email yes. should, and then then you could go on, go on. I no, love the no subject problem. line part as well. Like you're, you're focusing on the right metrics here. Yep. So the email body copy, a postscript and a strong call to action. The target audience is licensed real estate professionals, 60% women with an average age of 52 and college I graduates. The, I love the detail. This is good. <laughs> who are homeowners. Their goal is to earn the most money in the least amount of time. So let me let me say this. I did this and within minutes, I, I had say, my... How did you know most of the industry is soccer moms? Oh, because the National Association of Realtors puts out an annual report and I went and found the annual report to understand who my target audience is because this I teach awesome. realtors. This is awesome. I think I think that one of the major leaders, uh, that I won't name him, and I was watching his uh, podcast yesterday and, and he actually named this. He was like, look, 60% of the industry is actually soccer moms. They, they, they chose us as a second job. They didn't choose it as the first job. And they are looking to do this. They can't be managed. They can't have bosses, but they're good business and um, business owners and they use anything that they can to get deals, to move on and just have a secondary um, stream of income from real estate. So that's uh, that's that's just right there. I love it. <laughs> well, good. Okay. So look, great minds think alike. Now, Here's where the goal comes in. So what that then did was you produced an email series and I wanted to just pull you an email series. And let me just say this. Um, one thing that I will say about this and in this one, um, this was a different series because I told you I couldn't find that one, but this is an example, right? What I will say we went back and we looked at our email matrix, right? And, and the click through open and then click through rates. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm actually taking through what they call advanced analytics inside of ChatGPT. You have to have the paid version. I'm taking our highest performing email series and I'm having AI to analyze it to then tell me how to write my emails. That's awesome. That's awesome. The, the, okay. So how many words? What did this uh, subject sound like? What is the tone? All of that. So what I'm loving about AI is historically, we thought things had to go one direction, right? Today, you get to reverse engineer any process because of artificial intelligence. So we used to think that we uh, would come up with the script and then we had to do the video and then we could break the video down. Well, no, I can now take the text to create the video. That makes sense. That's, 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 that's perfect. So now you have this. So, so walk me through this. How would you use this on chat GPT? So uh, walk me through a scenario and let's, let's teach our audience a little bit. And, and guys, you can actually head on to Mike's website. We are putting it down in the, in the YouTube uh, bio here. So make sure you go there and, and, and get, uh, get to see her courses. She's, she's teaching a ton about how to use AI for um, real estate. So make sure that you're doing this and make sure that you are utilizing and, and reading um, everything that she's doing. So, all right, so let's go. So- I will copy and paste it, okay. right? We come right on over here and so this was the it text is... that we created, remember? Now yep. we are giving it, so I love it. Email one, subject line one, um, the header, the body, and it's going for the full thing. That's awesome. I love the PS part. Look at that. It even has call to action. It's putting the emojis in and it is okay. going to stop. 
It's not going to give me all eight. And all I'm going to do is tell it then continue. That's that's awesome. So I think something else that's really interesting is you can use this for your follow-up messages as well, right? So like if you had a seller, if you had a buyer in your database, you can use and create the same prompt, right? Yeah, okay. you can. And if you want to automate this, you would bring in Zapier and you can have Zapier now pull these directly out of the systems and put it into uh, Google Documents. Now, I will tell you what I'm noticing is the body is not meaty enough for me. And so I could easily come back and make each one of them, uh, I would say, meatier, but have more content. And I could say, you know, elaborate on email number eight, uh, include more information in the body. Okay, that's very interesting. And, and, and obviously, you're talking about plugins within ChatGPT, the ChatGPT4, where you would have your own plugins and they can just integrate with Zapier and kind of go from there. So I love that you're going with continue. You're, you're giving it like um, um, more and more uh, uh, basically uh, focus. And remember, guys, what she had was she had a web page. ChatGPT went in, read the web page, learned her tone, and now is marketing the product for her. I think this is the this is the really really cool thing that 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 we don't see, right? So ChatGPT is not just to write template messages; is to learn, is to do uh, things beyond um, a lot of great stuff. So walk me through this. So now you have all these emails. What would you do with it? Uh, with these emails, I'm going to take them and put them into my customer relationship management system. There is a landing page that goes with this. So this would have been a part of that uh, one of two email C, uh, series, actually one of three email series uh, for every sales funnel we have. When we're selling a person on an item, we are going to market that to the public. And then we're going to market that also to the people existing on our email list. And then we have an email funnel for once people buy a product. So we have a follow-up. So generally, we're going to have three different email sequences for every product. So now we will bring that into our customer relationship management system and tag it appropriately so that they can be sent out. But let, I missed a very vital step. We download it and we always edit it because we have to make sure that we delete things that would not sound like us. Oh, Sometimes that's a, that's a, that's that's a golden part. Like I think a lot of yes. people miss that. Okay. Oh, so you you want to make sure edit. you're downloading it, you're vetting it before it goes out, yes. right? Even if let me say this, even if this was using Zapier to pull it into one of the folders over inside of Google Drive, I'm still going to edit. So I don't put anything out to the public that I don't edit first. Okay, that's that's perfect. Now, my next question for you is this. Imagine that I'm a new realtor. I'm getting a start and I'm going to stop sharing for a bit so we can see your face and then we can just share again. Yeah. Um, imagine that I'm a new realtor or new to AI, but not new, new as an industry, new, new. So what are the things that you would tell me that I can do with ChatGPT to improve my business? Okay. Like I know we can talk about content creation. We can talk about, um, email marketing. What else? What else is out there? Well, if you're a new realtor, we, I'm not going to tell you to use it for anything until we sit down and do a business plan. And then I'm going to have you to use it in creating your business plan. If you're a very new realtor, the very first thing that I want to sit down and let's have dialogue about is I think there are three things that most new realtors fail to do. They fail to understand what properties are selling for in certain communities and what communities are selling at the fastest rate. Well, it might be a community that, yeah, millions of houses sell, but they sell rarely. So now what I really want us to do is look at the rate of, uh, what is the rate of sale? So pick, identify that price point. Understand what that rate of sale is, but you have to understand the target audience. So if we were going to look at the mortgage rates today, a person can afford a house at two and a half times their gross annual income. A lot of times we have people hanging out with $100,000 folks who want million dollar homes. They cannot afford them and afford to buy these houses. So I'm looking at price point. I'm looking at rate of sale. And then I'm looking at, at barriers to entry. So there's a community in the city of Chicago called Chinatown. Chinatown, a lot of people, they, 
they're Asian descent. They speak uh, Mandarin, Chinese. I know because my son went to school in close proximity. When the students hit the front door, they know that with my girlfriends all day. I understand what we like, what we don't like, what we're going through in life, all of that. That's a concept you have to have before you go over into artificial intelligence to start telling it what it is you want it to do. Oh, that's 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 gold there. So what you're telling me I should know exactly who I'm targeting, like what you did with realtors, age this much and this much. This is the this is what the education is and so on. The next thing is your barrier to entry into that market. So I think that's a, that's a golden one as well. Like if, if, if you live on the cheap side of town, you hang out with within the cheapest bars in town, you can't go in and, and target the highest market. Um, and it is. You, look, you speak in beer language, not wine language. You got to speak wine language on the luxury side of town. <laughs> Gosh, those people. So yes, uh, that's 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 awesome. So not only you need to understand your market, you need to understand what they do, how they look and feel, and act and feel like them. So they can they can have some kind of reciprocity with you, and they can connect with you. So that's that's awesome. So now, imagine that I know my market. Imagine that I know who am I targeting, and so on. What is the next step? Do I just so, go in and start launching a million campaigns or do I get to invest in myself first and and kind of go from there? So I think we should definitely, it's kind of like do and learn, right? That is, it's like real estate, okay? Um, and actually, <laughs> the more real estate you sell, the more knowledgeable you become because you have all of these unique situations that have occurred. The next thing for me is you have to create a business plan because the actions... Well, no, the goal will dictate the actions. So I have a business plan. I know who I need to target. I know how many times I need to be in front of people. I know where I need to be in front of the people. I, you asked me, well, who do I work for? I told you, right? Clear on who I need to create content for, or better yet, who the check writers are, right? And so I am leveraging that for my business plan, which will then dictate the type of content in which I create. Okay, that's 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 awesome. So now we have all those. We go in and we start creating the content. Okay, we start creating the business plan, and then yes. from the business okay. plan, and we understand. I'll give you a prime example. My target audience. Can is I go to Chat GPT and say, "Give me a business plan"? It probably you can't go to. Well, you can, but if you don't have your target audience in there, you're going to have a piss poor business plan. <laughs> so you can do it. I don't know how great it's going to be. You still need to do some form of research, right? And if you're trying to build a, a six or a seven figure business, then you're going to want to spend some time in research. Let me tell you why. My family owned Chicago, second oldest black restaurant. We've been in business since 1954. My grandfather was a legacy inductee into the Barbecue Hall of Fame. Okay. Wow. When I went to go to market, uh, Arthur and Cousin, who was part of Barack's uh, cabinet, had secured me space at Jules when she was still there. Okay. Now, what I've, but with some information I didn't know, instantly, Open pit barbecue sauce is my competitor. Well, I can never compete with an open pit when you can get their barbecue sauce for 99 cents, right, during National Barbecue Month. So I had to identify who my target market was through research, even though I already had an advanced degree. I had physically in 1999 took time out to go through the Women Self-Employment Project to go to the library to do the research. Now, to take all that research that I did and I can plug it back into chat GPT now but I will still say you want to when you're talking about investing and you want investors you got to take some time and do some real research okay because if you feed it garbage you're going to get garbage back or you're not going to have a viable product that is sustainable and to me, I'm not doing this work because it's, it's, you know, it's the hottest, latest, greatest thing. I'm doing the work in a responsible manner in order to build a sustainable business. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. So now you have that business plan. Where do we start? So the one, yes. one, one point was creating your own voice paragraph. I think that was, um, that was really good. Um, and that was really valuable. Now you have your voice paragraph. What are the next things that you would do? Well, let me tell you what I'm going to do 
because this is hindsight information. What I know now is how much content I need to generate in order to earn the amount of money that I want to earn. So if a realtor is looking to build, right, a six-figure business, one, they need to generate, and let's say $100,000, they need to generate 2,880 leads. But that also means that I need to generate or have an output of about 40,000 words per month in content. So what I want to think about is how am I going to automate content creation that consumers need in the communities in which I want to serve based on my business plan. Because if I put out 40,000 words of content every single month with a call to action, it will enable or better yet empower my business to generate the leads that I need to generate in order for me to get to 2,880 contacts, allowing me to close 20 transactions. And if those uh, minimum price point is $250,000, I just added six figures in income. So for me now, it's about the numbers, right? But it's not about just reaching the numbers. It is 100% about the consumer. And we have to solve consumers' problems. A lot of content that we as realtors put out do not solve problems. If you are not solving their problem and you're not talking to them in the manner in which they search, they will just look, they will look right past you. That's very interesting. That's very awesome. Okay, so now you have these prompts, you have the sounds, and you have everything else that 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 sounds like you. You have the text and so on. What is the next step? What would you do with that text and so on? So I'm going to create content. And I'm going to not only create the content through the words, I'm going to take the words and create the photos using tools like Mid Journey, and I'm going to consistently post. So one thing that has happened since ChatGPT my output has increased 261%. Now, I didn't know what number I needed to get to, right? But I just knew I needed more content. So when I say that my content increased 261%, it went from 160,000 words per month to 400,000 words per month, a little bit over 400,000 words. How did you measure before? Oh, I was measuring before. I didn't know I even needed let me be clear, I didn't even know I needed to measure this, um, but through Grammarly. So I've been using Grammarly ever since September 13th, 2015, and it measures my weekly output and my total output that's, since that day. That's, that's awesome. I think this, it, it's it's the famous saying, right? Like what's important gets measured, what's measured gets done, right? So I think that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the lesson there. Okay. So you measured your output and this is awesome. And... As a result of me having a 261% increase in my output, I had a 283% increase in my monthly income. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. So the monthly income went from $34,000 per month to $97,000 per month. That's great. You're now in the seven-figure club. That's awesome. I'm now officially woo. let me we're gonna knock on wood around here but here's what's funny i always thought i should be a seven-figure company what i did not know is what my output needed to be in order to get me there that makes sense that makes sense and 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 how do you use help to get you organized like because because there's a million things happening right so what are you doing to keep you organized to 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 keep the momentum and so on especially with travel so my momentum has never been a problem. The way that I operate now is the way I've always operated. Um, I'm a, I am a proud fifth generation entrepreneur in the restaurant business. My, I saw my parents work hard. My grandparents worked hard. My great parents worked hard. Great grandparents worked hard. So I am who I've always been when it comes to my work ethics. I was, I was this person as a teenager, right? I've always loved work because of, it was a family affair for me. And so I don't need help with that. What I do need help with is being reined in um, to remain focused and to not consistently create new stuff because I am a creator by nature. So my director of operations, she checks me and she keeps me in order. If not, I'm just, I'm just right. And it's like, come back, Marky, take a deep breath. Let us do this. And what I've, what I've trained myself to do is I think with the end in mind, one project at a time, and I don't do anything that does not get me to the goal. So wow. I say no a lot. That's 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 no. that's a lovely lesson. No. Okay. No. Say no a lot. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. In fact, like most of my greatest uh, uh, friends and greatest entrepreneurs that I know, 
always give me the cold shoulder. Like I'm like, yeah, it is favorite family. Like no, no, and that's it. That's it. it, and, and, it but they can't do the. They can't. They don't have the time to do so. And it becomes a distraction. And it, when it becomes a distraction, now it's a hindrance, right? And so, but here's what I will tell you probably about your friends. When they do do something for you, it is going to be done right because they pride themselves on doing a good job. Yes, yes. I think that's the, that's the biggest lesson there. That's the biggest thing. And yeah. I think that's the that's the that's a great thing. So, guys, say no to a lot of distractions. Go focus on your business. Do not forget to subscribe to Mikey's channels. Uh, they're all down in the link below. And remember, you can use AI to boost your productivity, like what Mike is doing. And she yes, is can. she's done an amazing job. Um, I love how she's educating and training the industry to be better at what they do. Because guess what? If you're not good at what you do, you're going to be replaced by AI. But use AI to grow your business. So thank you so much for joining. And we would see you around for the next webinar.